We are overjoyed that you are here in the sanctuary this morning. A few instructions before we begin worship. The operative word is restraint. Though you feel like singing, we ask you to recite the word yourself and let the quartet sing. The prayers and affirmations speak softly to yourself. Although we will receive the declaration of peace, we will not pass the peace during the service, just be seated. Because our service is being videoed online or for an online audience, we ask you uh, as to wait until leaving after the organist has concluded the postlude. In lieu of an offering, we ask you to drop your envelopes and donations in the collection plate in the narthex. And then finally, we need to ask you to leave without gathering or mingling. Worship God with your mind and heart and save your voice this morning. It is a joy to have you here in the house of the Lord. Let us stand to worship God. Restore us again, God of our salvation. Revive us that we may rejoice in you. Let us hear what God will speak because God is faithful and has chosen us to be God's faithful people. Return to the Lord in your hearts my people, that glory may dwell in our land. May righteousness and peace kiss. May faithfulness spring up from the ground and righteousness look down from the sky.
When we gather to praise God, we remember that we are people who have preferred our wills to his, accepting pain and distress. When situations are bleak, you have healed, restored, preserved, and guided us. We confess the self-centeredness and ingratitude that cause us to forget your manifold goodness. Forgive our selfish ways. Awaken us to your presence. Enable us to live our on us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may now take a moment for silent confession. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to their prayers again. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In God's abundant grace, we have been forgiven. God has freed us from our sin and transformed our grief into joy. Now we can be at peace with God. In gratitude for that great gift, let us share God's peace with the world. You may be seated. Let us unite our hearts in Open our eyes to see it our ears to hear it, our hearts to hold it, and our hands to serve it. As we see this in holy name we pray, amen. Our first scripture lesson comes from the book of Exodus. We'll be reading from chapter 12, beginning with the first verse. Listen for the word of God. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread. Over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it hurriedly this is the Passover of the Lord for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals 
On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance from you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of God for the people of God. Our second scripture lesson is from the book of Exodus, chapter 13, reading from verses 3 to 10. Moses said to the people, remember this day on which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, because the Lord brought you out from there by strength of hand, no living bread shall be eaten. Today, in the month of Abib, you are going out. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, 
the Amorites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites, which he saw to your ancestors to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. You shall keep this observance of in this month. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a festival to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No living bread shall be seen in your possession, and no living shall be seen among you in all your territory. You shall tell your child on that day, it is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. It shall serve for you as a sign of your hand and as a reminder on your forehead so that teaching of the Lord may be on your lips. For with a strong hand, the Lord brought you out of Egypt. You shall keep this ordinance at its proper time from year to year. The word of God for the people of God. It's been exactly 25 Sundays since we closed the doors of this sanctuary. Today is the 26th Sunday. Half a year has gone by. I never thought I would see the doors of the church closed, never see the sanctuary empty on Sunday mornings. I never thought I'd see a church without children and youth running around. Never thought I would see the streets of Chicago empty. We've seen so much suffering, sickness, and death, so much appropriate and elevated fear. But thankfully, the work of the church has been deemed essential through this whole time. Our worship has continued online. Our staff have kept busy. Our elders and deacons have followed through in their many ministries. Our volunteers continue to serve meals. We're doing good for our neighbors and serving the community. Today, we hope, is a new beginning, a symbolic new start. When we think about community, we think about eating together. When we talk about community, we think about sharing a meal together. In this morning's lesson, we see that God called the Hebrew people together to a public place. They gathered to slay a lamb without blemish and took branches of hyssop to spread the blood on the doorpost of their family homes. Then they returned to their huts to share a meal. Previously, the Hebrew slaves had been on an Egyptian calendar, but a symbolic meal they proclaimed that today was a new beginning. They were not on Pharaoh's time, but on God's time. No longer slaves under the rule of Pharaoh, but people chosen by God to serve God. No longer living in slavery, but living in anticipation of being liberated and sent forth to the promised land. The Hebrew people were awakening to a new chapter in their history, awakening to a new glory as God's redeemed people. As they gathered around the table, they ate a meal of a lamb, bitter herbs, and unleavened bread, it was their last supper. The scripture says they ate in haste with their bags packed, sandals on their feet, staff at hand, ready to leave Egypt at a moment's notice. 
the meal that they shared symbolized the redemption at hand and anticipated the redemption that was to come. With the Hebrew people, we share a meal centered around a sacrifice that anticipates our redemption. Richard Rohr writes, God does not look down upon us from a distance like a spectator. Instead, God suffers with us to deliver and liberate us. God participates in our suffering in order to bring us through the suffering into a place of blessing. God sanctifies the hardships we undergo by being present with us and transforming us to bring us to a new place of blessing. A body dies. On our behalf, blood is shed. The symbols of bread and wine, it's sober and serious as we realize that Jesus died for us, but it's a meal that celebrates joy as we realize that Jesus' death was not the final word. His resurrection and the new life he offered the church complete the Passover of God with God's people. Don't anyone shrink back in fear this morning and don't let anyone take away your joy. We know these times demand a lot from us. We're going to continue going through times of sheltering in place, continue to wear masks and maintain our social distance, make sacrifices for our health and for the common good. We will continue to feel separation and sometimes isolation. Our sense of family and community will continue to be stretched. But with God, there's always something more, the inbreaking of the future. When COVID-19 first hit, our pastoral assistant Leslie said, the day we return should be like Easter Sunday, a day of resurrection. Not today when only a few people feel like it's safe to come back, but the day when everyone, everyone who's part of this congregation will feel safe to join us in worship that's a redemption, and that's the resurrection that we look forward to. And we trust it will happen someday. If anyone has ever been to our service here at this multicultural congregation, you know that we're famous for at least two things. First, we've always had a shared meal after the service. Individuals or families put on a feast, a spread of hospitality for the entire congregation with second and third helpings and birthday cake and punch. There's always good fellowship and interaction. People visit and talk and linger in the joy of celebrating life together. It's such a beautiful tradition. And then secondly, have you ever noticed here at Second Church six months ago that the passing of the peace can go on for 10 minutes or more? People are overjoyed to see each other Sunday after Sunday. People express their love for each other with a hug, a kiss, and an embrace. We have to stop the service. It keeps going on and on and people mill around the sanctuary. Well, today we can't hug each other. We can't give a kiss of peace. But I urge you to share with your eyes and hands what you feel in your heart. It's so good to see you. I've missed you. Underneath the mask, put a big smile. I've been praying for you, or I love you. One day, 
We will hug and hold and embrace each other. One day we will share a meal together and everyone will be present. One day God will bring us back together from our family homes into full communion as a community together. By the provision of God and the timing of God, we trust in that day and we believe in that hope. Today we share a meal of redemption in anticipation of the redemption that is to come. And when our children ask us why this meal is different from all the others, we will tell them, the Lord God brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Amen. God's word by reciting the Apostle Creed. Say quietly, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. Third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We welcome you to worship this day. We are blessed with your presence with us here in the sanctuary or online. After the service today, we will continue our discussions on racial justice and racial reconciliation with a Zoom coffee hour at 1.30. A Zoom link was just sent out this morning, and we hope you'll join us for these important conversations. We also invite you to join us for three Bible studies, a prayer circle, two book groups, and a film discussion group. We remain active as we keep each other connected. If you need prayers, please call the church office or fill out an online request form. We're near our goal of paying for our audiovisual equipment that has helped us live stream and broadcast our services, which have allowed hundreds of people to worship with us. Please give your gift today and remember at the conclusion of this service to right click your donate button on our website and be faithful and generous as we express our hope. In our joys, we give thanks for a successful surgery for Lloyd Carter, at Illinois Masonic, and he says a big thank you to all for your prayers. We celebrate the birth of Jaina Kisiwa Gima, daughter of Deborah Antwi and Michael Gima on Sunday night in Stroger, and we celebrate Eris as a younger sister to play with. In our prayers, we remember all those at various stages chemotherapy and decisions about their treatment. We keep in mind all those who are struggling with the effects of wildfire and hurricane and other natural disasters. On this Labor Day weekend, we especially pray for healthcare workers and first responders and all who seek the common good. And we pray for our children and teachers of Chicago public schools, and all schools as we start a new term. God is good to us all the time. We experience God's goodness. Let us continue our worship and prepare for the sacrament of the Lord's Supper.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and to offer our petitions to you in his name. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that our prayers for others may serve your will. We pray for nations in the midst of internal or external struggles and conflicts. Teach us, O oh God, to seek nonviolent ways towards resolutions. Help us to speak the truth and to listen with understanding when perspectives are far apart. You sent us a savior, Jesus Christ, to break down the walls of hostility that divide us send peace on earth, and put down greed, pride, anger, quit turn nations against nation, and race against race. We remember before you people who are sick or undergoing surgery, and people who live with chronic pain and diseases. Bless your people everywhere with food, shelter, health care, and employment sufficient for them so that they may live together by the riches of your grace during these pandemic times. We pray for those in authority that they may be guided by your wisdom so that they may lead us in the way of righteousness. We pray for the church that they might proclaim your salvation to all. We pray for friends and family that in the darkness of their despair, when life seems empty, Lord, you give them the light of hope. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Christ, our, post, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Jesus suffered for sin once and for all. The righteousness for the unrighteous. The just for the unjust. In order that he might bring us to God. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. That we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Our Lord welcomes all to this table. All for whom he gave his life so freely. Come, the table is set. The feast is ready. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. You are holy, O God of majesty. He created us in freedom to love and serve you. When we turned away from your law, you sent prophets to call us to return to your covenant. When the time was right, you sent Jesus to be our Messiah and our Savior. He lived a righteous life as your faithful witness, teaching your word and sharing with the disciples the kingdom of God. To those beset by disease, he gave curing and healing. To those crushed from the injustice of life, he gave hope. He shared our life in every way, Though tempted many times, he was sinless to the end. Condemned in a mock trial, he took upon himself the weight of our sins and carried the burden of our guilt. He carried the cross of his own death through the city streets. Dying, he called out to forgive those who crucified him. By your power, the tomb could not hold one who lived as he lived. Through your gracious reign, he was raised to new life. In his rising and ascension, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us, and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the good news of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gave his life for us, he took the bread, he blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take this in remembrance of me. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. The body of Christ.
And in the same manner, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup is the covenant of my blood, shed for the remission of sins. Drink ye all of it in remembrance of me, for I am the vine, and you are the branches. Lift up your hearts. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant that we who have received the sacrament of, the, of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. journey led by God, believing that salvation has come and yet salvation is yet to be achieved, believing that redemption is ours and yet to be accomplished. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion of the Spirit and the companionship of each other go before you to bless you now and always. 
And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you.